Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. We are on chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, text 26. Shrotra dinyan briyani anye samya mag nishu juvati shabda din vishayan anya indriyag nishu juvati. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace in Sivartha Vedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. Some, the unadulterated brahmacharis, sacrifice the curing process and the senses in the fire of mental control, and others, the regulated householders, sacrifice the objects of the senses in the fire of the senses. The members of the four divisions of human life, namely the brahmachari, the grahas, the vanapras, and the sannyasi, are all meant to become perfect yogis or transcendentalists. So Krishna divided the society into the four ashram, four varnas and four ashrams. So the ashrams are brahmachari, krast, vanaprast, and sannyasi, in which proper training is given to the person according to what ashram they are in. And but what's the goal? The goal is to uh, that in this life we live peacefully, and at the end of life we go back home, back to Godhead. So in this life live peacefully and at the same time cultivate spiritual knowledge cultivate the knowledge of self-realization that is to become perfect yogi or transcendentalist so since human life is not meant for our enjoying sense gratification like the animals the four orders of human life are so arranged that one may become perfect in spiritual life so there is a difference between animal life and human life. There is a difference between animal life and human life. And what is the difference? The difference is that in this human form of life, we can actually understand spiritual knowledge. We can engage in these uh, activities of Krishna consciousness. We may try to understand spiritual knowledge in human life, in animal life, we do not have the capability. So the brahmacharis or students under the care of a bona fide spiritual master control the mind by abstaining from sense gratification. Brahmachari, that's the beginning when the child is small. So up to 25 years old, the, the man was trained, trained, would go, would train under a, a guru, a bona fide spiritual master. What was the training for? Training was for how to control the mind and senses. How to control the mind and senses. So a brahmachari hears only words concerning Krishna consciousness. Hearing is the basic principle for understanding. And therefore, the pure brahmachari engages fully in Hare Nama Anu Kirtanam, chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. How, can, how do we get knowledge? How do we get knowledge? Is by hearing. In in uh, before before Kaliyuk, knowledge was not written; it was only spoken. Shruti. That's why it's called Shruti. Was spoken. There was no need of writing. But because Kaliyuk is a degraded age and our memories are not sharp, for our benefit, then the knowledge is written, so we can read it again and again. So reading is also hearing. So this is how we can get knowledge by hearing as now we are reading. So we are also hearing knowledge of Bhagavad Gita from Srila Prabhupada. So what was the Brahmachari doing? Brahmachari was hearing only about uh, hearing and chanting about Krishna's glories, chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. He restrains himself from the vibrations of material sounds and his hearing is engaged in the transcendental sound vibration of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So the brahmachari, he's trained in the ashram. He's trained in the ashram that the activity that he's going to do is he's going to hear and chant the Hare Krishna mantra, the glories of the Lord. And in this way, automatically his mind and senses come under control. So similarly, the householders who have some license for sense gratification perform such acts with great restraint. Sex life, intoxication, and meat eating are general tendencies of human society, 
but a regulated householder does not indulge in unrestricted unrestricted sex life and other sense gratification. So brahmachari, because their focus is on learning, that's a brahmachari's focus. So his full energy is utilized in hearing and chanting to cultivate the spiritual knowledge, to get the spiritual knowledge, hearing the glories of the Lord, chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Then after 25 years old, then the brahmachari may decide to become a grihast may decide to marry it's his he may either continue to remain a brahmachari till the end of life or he may continue to remain a brahmachari to a certain point and then become a sannyasi or he may after finishing his brahmachari life he may uh, choose to enter grihast life so what does grihast means there is license for sense gratification there is license because as brahmachari there is no sex life but in in grihast life yes there is uh, there is a sex life there is greater enjoyment there is but what does a real grihast do he does not unrestrict his senses he yes he gets this sense enjoyment but following the rules and regulations under restrictions. So marriage on the principles of religious life, it's therefore current in all civilized human society because that is the way of restricted sex life. This restricted, unattached sex life is also a kind of yagya because the restricted householder sacrifices this general tendency towards sense gratification for a higher transcendental life. So a grihast, he has all the facilities for sense enjoyment. He has all these facilities. But in spite of having the facility, he uh, enjoys the senses according to rules and regulations, not unrestrictedly not unrestrictedly because when we engage in unrestricted sense enjoyment then that is animal life so when we are in human life we in, we have sense enjoyment but we have we follow certain rules and regulations and then this kind of following rules and regulations uh, enjoying in under rules and regulation that becomes yagya that's a yagya that is a uh, because why? Because then the goal is to elevate our consciousness for a higher purpose, elevate our consciousness for transcendental life. Not only just the consciousness, uh, not, not to fully indulge the consciousness in animal life of only eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, but unrestricted, but following rules and regulations, restricting mind and senses, and at the same time, uh, uh, cultivating spiritual knowledge. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So we can see that no matter if we are grahas, we are brahmachari, we are vanaprast or sannyasi, the aim, it doesn't matter, you know, where it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. No, we just have to follow the principle of the ashram we are in. Just follow the ashram we are in. And so do the duties that is required for that ashram. Do it. And at the same time, cultivate spiritual knowledge. So spiritual knowledge the focus of cultivating spiritual knowledge is there in brahmachari, vanaprast, and uh, sannyasi. That's their focus. But what to do about grihast? Because they have so many responsibilities. What to do? Should they give up responsibility? No, never. Krishna never says that. Krishna never tells Arjuna, you give up your fighting. No. So grihast, if someone's a grihast, do your duties nicely best of the ability do the duties keeping krishna in center keep keep krishna in center and then do all the uh, activities of family life and in that way the consciousness gets elevated so thank you so much for listening in and joining in bhagavad gita ki jai shla prabhupad ki jai hare krishna